market update here on the second. Starting here at Tesla, um, we got we got a move down early in the morning down here to 245. One of the expected possibilities they did beat their delivery numbers, and this is probably the bottom right here. This is looking right here to me like <clears throat> potentially the start of a move higher. It looks to me like this could be actually wave one or wave A. It's uh, hard to say on this right here. It does look like it would be a diagonal up. It actually would end right here. I think this is probably ABC. Uh, maybe. It's kind of hard to tell on the lower time frame. Either here or here is wave one or wave A. And it looks to me like we got an ABC move right here. So I'm expecting this to go higher from here. Um, I don't think there's very much. It's not as valid to go down from here. And again, I don't really care if it does. Because we're looking at this as expanded flat. So we have A, B. The max we can go down is 236. So if it were to fall, that would kind of suck because I have some long positions. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on the one three minute time frames, but I think that we're more than likely to go up and the market's down 1.65% today. Unless something crazy happens tomorrow, uh, I'm guessing that this gap is not going to be filled yet. It still remains to be seen though. Are we going to be um, making a C wave here? Like that? Or is this going to end up being the top right here? of a wave five and we are making a wave B. Something maybe like this and then come down here. The reason I don't like this though is because if this was five waves, if this was five waves in the bottom, then it needs to come all the way down here to 225. But the 1.61 fib of this move, which is usually how far you'd expect a C wave to go, only takes us down to 231. So it'd be a shallow wave two. So for that reason, I'm still leaning towards the move up for a C wave. So if you haven't watched previous videos, basically I'm still leaning towards this. Um, the whole thing is looking like, and we'd be currently finishing wave B and we'd have wave C up. That could go to a maximum of like 286, I think. Uh, 280, and actually that's right where the long-term trend line is at. Am I on, I'm on regular though, on log chart 286. But it could just go up here to 274. Um, actually, if you use just this parallel line right here, it basically goes to like 275. So something like that up here to like 274, 275 is the base case. And I think the downside should be finished. I have a few puts just in case, but I think that for the most part, it should be finished. So that's Tesla. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. And then the market's down a bunch. We're holding up. They beat deliveries. They have earnings in 22 days. I don't see any valid reason for it to tank anymore. We're also at the very bottom of this range. There's a bunch of different reasons why this should be bouncing. Um, did it hit the... And we went below the 20. We, we finished above it on Friday, went below it today. We're back above it now. So that's gonna be very telling too. We're we gonna finish above the 20 day finish above the 20 day, then I think that's pretty bullish. and We can keep on going higher up here to this target. It would be stretching out this Bollinger Band, but um, as long as it just, you know, kind of makes its way out like this, maybe into OPEX, um, then it's fine, I think. So two possibilities, ABC down or 275 up, leaning toward 275 up. And uh, yeah, that's Tesla. Apple, I was looking at this one, I actually just bought a few shares. The reason why I bought shares, I'll look at QQQ first. I'm thinking that QQQ might be in a fourth wave here. 
And I'm on the one hour time frame. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Um, if this is one, two, then you have one, two, three, four, five. A, B, C down. Um, the C wave can go all the way down to 396, potentially. But I would say it's potentially done here, probably done. Let's just see where. So it's already basically at the 0.38 fib. Um, if it goes to 396, it's going past the 0.5 fib. It's probably finished by that point. We're in a demand zone. I think that QQQ is probably about finished. And that might have been the bottom right there. You have five waves right here. And then you get a nice bounce, pull back here. Um, and this is coming back up here. I think there's a very good chance that this is bottomed. And I think you might see new highs going into OPEX. So I don't know if this is the real dip or not. It's still possible that the end of the wave three is right here. It did hit 413, which is my target. So I'm gonna be watching this bounce. I would wanna see an impulse move up here to new highs. If we get a corrective bounce up here, then that is going to be bearish. So we have to see an impulse move here. Um, so far, so good, held the lows, nice move up. I'll be following that. I wanna see holding this, and I would like to see um, going to at least tomorrow, going to at least like 405.69. Pull back, probably going to like 407 if it's a five wave move, and that would probably just be wave one. So maybe something like this. Potentially, I'm not going to say it's 100%, but based on a lot of the charts, I think it's very likely that we go to new highs, and it might just make a new quick high. Maybe it goes to 415 and we're done into OPEX, and then we're gonna sell off. So that's my thoughts on it right now. Um, Apple, I did buy some shares around like 186 and 185.50, right before this video. It is going down lower. Um, it's kind of hard to make sense of this move, but it's kind of similar to QQQ on higher time frames. You go down on lower time frames, this is a very, very weird move. Um, it doesn't look very impulsive to me. I mean, it does, but like if you go on lower time frames, the waves are kind of messed up. See, this comes back into the first wave. This could be ABC. There's a lot of different things messed up. This might be making one more low, is kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe one more low. I just got in a little, maybe a little bit early. Um, it did fill this gap here. 185 so it might be coming down here to like this area right here Let's see So 184.96 to 184.63 potentially Let's just see how far we can go out. I think we can go out to the four hour yeah, so 185.12 to 184.51. I might have gotten in a little bit early, but we'll see if it bounces there. If it doesn't bounce there, then maybe it is an um, extended fifth wave, or C wave, I'm sorry. But here's the thing that's weird about Apple. Let's get into this now. So this is A wave. This is A. This is B. The C wave right here. The way that this ends looks like a B wave, similar to QQQ. It looks like a B wave to me. Um, it'd be a very extended, expanded flat though. It went way past the 1.61 fib. And then this would be an impulse move down. Um, the way that this could be that is one, two, three. I'm not sure about that because that'd be a pretty big move for Apple. Um, so it might have topped out right here. This could be a fifth wave, but it doesn't look like a fifth wave to me. So uh, I'm looking for at least a bounce. There's a gap fill here at 192. That's why I bought shares. And we will see. It's way outside standard deviations here. Um, 
But again, this should be going to at least at least 182 based on the fibs, potentially down here to 155. But if you're looking at this as a fourth wave as well, let's just say this is a fourth wave. It already had a really deep correction. Might be looking at something like a running flat. I don't know if it's going to break below this area right here. Um, I actually would think like 173, just based on how far it went up here, would be a good target. So a lot of uncertainty with Apple, but um, one thing we do know for sure is that this is um, not an impulse move. We broke the high here. So this is an impulse move. So I'm buying here. I might be a little bit off a few dollars, but I'm pretty confident that we're going higher here. So eventually you're gonna go higher, probably soon too. Um, the other ones, Microsoft. It's the same thing, really. It kind of looks like we might be going higher here. There might be another low here, um, but it just looks to me like a, B, C, like that. Um, a, B, B, C. It just looks like a triangle almost, too. It could be a triangle. Let's see. A, B. But anyway, overall, I just think that this looks to me like it is going to go higher. And based on QQQ, I can't see it coming down here yet, but I do think that it's going to finish off probably down here into this gap fill at some point. Let's zoom out here. This is probably a third wave right here. Third wave of a fifth wave, so. We're probably looking at something down here for a fourth wave. But I think that probably gonna get that just based on QQQ as well. So um, look for more downside, but more upside probably short term on Microsoft. I kind of want to get this right though. So A, and we have A, B, C. So that's a right there. Is that right? So A. Either way, I can look at this later, but um, B wave up here. Sometimes these little little waves um, I have to go over when I'm not already on the video. So B wave looking up there, there is a gap fill right up here at 375, similar to Apple. So uh, potentially that gets filled. Look at Apple one more time. Oh, and Apple had a pretty big um, print. I'll show you real quick. Um, at 186.47, oh, only 19 million, I guess. They had a bunch at 192. Why do you think it dumped? Look at all that. But they got a 186.47. That's probably somebody buying. Um, so that's Apple. Let's go over. Oh, that's Microsoft and Apple and Tesla. Let's go over DXY. So here the dollar is finally bouncing, like I've been talking about. And uh, there's going to be some more upside to the dollar here short term but wave one is almost definitely finished here ended up coming all the way down to 164 so let's go to the week or the daily time frame the daily time frame here and we have a demand zone supply zone at 101 575 besides that I don't see very many good spots this would be a retracement 
of close to the 0.78 fib. That's where I expect it to go. So again, I think we're probably going to see um, a sharp move up like we're doing right now. We're probably going to get a B wave that will last um, longer than the A wave. So to get to 105.78, we're going to need to get to about 103.71. So you might see a little bit more upside here shortly. Maybe we get Yeah, maybe something up in here. You can see we had a big move here. I don't think there's there a gap there. There's never a gap on the dollar, really. But there is a demand zone right there, or supply zone. I keep on saying that. So maybe like up into this area right here, you're looking at it like this, basically. I would imagine that this would come into like January 19th, which is OPEX, and then we see a big move higher after OPEX on the 19th, kind of like that. And that takes, maybe I'm wrong on the timing, but after that, I would expect us to start the melt up again. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that, I think. I went over QQQ, didn't I, for a second? Fourth wave, potentially. If that's the case, I'm not banking on that, though. It could have been already finished right here. Um, but I do think that this structure could be the start of a fourth wave. We don't know. But it's either going to come up here and probably come back up here like 408, or we're going to go to new highs. Not sure which one. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, like and subscribe for more updates. I'll keep you updated on Tesla later in the day. And that's it for now. Good luck.